Hey, welcome back to the hangar. This is Pop Culture Hero, and let's get some mecha out of here so we can review. Blur. Generations Blur. Pretty cool. He's er, he's actually an extensive retool of, of Drift. Pretty much based on the IDW model more than the Generation 1, which is pretty awesome because it gets... And um, it is a retool slash repaint, so it's obviously based on an. So most of this sculpt is based on another character anyway. But you know, if you look at the IDW model, you'll see that drift drift's body does kind of match up with the IDW body anyway. And at least they give him a, a reasonable head and his weapon set. I look personally. I think the sniper rifle uh, weapon. That he can hold double-handed like this. It's a pretty large rifle and actually pretty nice to have some um, less neon weaponry in Transformers. This is very uncommon just to have a gun in Transformers, especially one as menacing as this. Now there are some special features to to um, Blur's weaponry that I'll go over. First of all, obviously has all of all of Drift's amazing arm movement. Tons of movement up here in the arms, though not necessarily as much down here in the legs. The legs you can sort of, you'll sort of have to mess around with to get the, but you can get some slow walking stances and you can mess around with this foot a little bit. And there's a knee in there. A little high knee, but it works. And there's also a transformation joint I suppose you can mess with. I'm perfectly fine with messing with transformation joints to get some poses. And you can also move these little uh, sheaths, or holsters rather, out of the way so, or when you're doing dynamic running poses. Just so that they're out of the way of things if you want to do a kick. Wah. So. As you can see, it can hold the rifle pretty well by alone, but and I like it shooting more t up towards the sky uh, and an aircraft kind of deal that Blur can do running. Though really, Blur so if you take Blur as his abilities as super fast speedster, he really could just take out Decepticons barehanded with his blinding speed. He's one of the few sup truly super powered. Uh, Transformers, um, whose abilities actually last consistently throughout the show. Well, fairly consistently. Uh, and his holsters are these two pistols, which have, which he can also wield, and that's kind of more speedster oriented. No drift swords do not go in the holsters. These holsters are also retooled. Removing the rifle. Well, I guess I don't have to remove the rifle, but it's easier to show it this way. And this little, and so you can hold it double-handed, this little notch goes back and forth for left or right-handedness. Whatever your preference. Generally, right-handed just is what works. As a neat feature, there are these two, you see all these grooves around here at the top of the barrel. Well, two of them are drilled out completely, and that's your hint to plug the two pistols using their tabs. See the little forks there? Using blur to contrast. And then you plug them in, and what you get is a rifle tripod. So this is, so you can actually set this up so that he can snipe uh, Decepticons on a on a cliff or a of swords. There's really only one way they go in. They line up perfectly to the curve. I guess I could show. And uh, here's Blur's head. All his weapons are five millimeter ports, by the way. So if you have anyone with the older style five millimeter port, yeah. You can totally use that. So there's Drift's head in all its glory. Very G1. It even has the little um, computer scope thing on top. 
yeah, it definitely looks like the dynamic Super Warrior Blur. All its glory. Uh, and um, nothing else to say. You could flip this down and get some Cybertronian detail underneath this panel. Same as Drifts. And, um, yeah, I've pretty much covered the articulation. These wrists do move, and they go in and out. So he's got, he's got all the right colors for Blur. Moving along. We'll transform this and be right back. First, move the arms up into the shoulders. Then start to move these back heel pieces around, obviously to become the back of the car. You'll want to line up these feet so that it will have the clearance necessary. And get it down like this. Next move these panels, slide them across and click them into place so that we can start covering up Blur's head. Completely fold the um, now lined up back section across the knees. Also flip up the flip these windows from the inside skirts. This will make it easier. Hey, look, opening doors. That's pretty nice. Anyway, you want to flip these windows in and out from the sheath. And after that, all you have to do is maneuver these skirt panels and these panels to lock up. I forgot to mention that there is also this little um, third arm, a uh, little double-jointed arm. And the point of this is to store the large sniper rifle in vehicle mode. But it's also so that you can store the, um, the sniper rifle on Blur's back if you want to and it allows you to move and it's mainly articulated for the robot mode so that when you have the sniper rifle on his back you can articulate it so it's not getting in the way of anything and that's nice they are considering posing more and more with these generation figures now then all you have to now with the sniper rifle you need to take the thickest part right here there it is clicks right there. Nice for a weapon as long as the car is. Does not hinder the rolling at all and everything stores away unlike a lot of the older Diaclone Transformers where you had to set accessories up to the side. It's nice to have all the parts together. And really this color scheme is very evocative of Generation 1 Blur. It's actually got a double tone white here, um, sort of this light, this uh, baby blue, and then a white stripe down the middle. Probably hard to tell. And then you got the more all sparky blue, and a darker blue, nice little racing striping down there. So pretty cool. It's a very detailed car mode, and um, it's got some twin exhausts. Fantastic little thing. Awesome Deluxe.